Yo, what's going on? So today what I want to do is just talk a little bit about grant applications and my two biggest pieces of advice when sort of, you know, having people write grant application and apply for art grants, things like that. Mainly because right now I am a juror on a grant. So I'm looking through applications, 65 to be specific, uh, applicants and sort of just going through their application because this is for the Artwork Archive Business Accelerator Grant and it went from 3,000 applicants that you know applied for the grant and now they whittle it down to 65 that they gave to the jurors and now we have to go through uh, the 65 applicants. For me, being a juror, uh, really helps out when it comes to understanding, you know, what a juror goes through uh, when, you know, reviewing applications and why some go forward and why some don't. So it's really important if you can get on jury to get on jury just to understand it. But I want to give you some uh, advice in terms of what I've been looking for because this is basically just through my perspective. Um, every juror is going to be different. They come from all walks of life. For me, this is what, you know, the two pieces of advice that I would say really helps out when it comes to having a juror go through your application and have them go through it smoothly and read everything and really just get excited about championing, championing you to that next round. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you're notified whenever I do videos like this. Now let's get to it. So the first piece of advice that I would say uh, really helps out is really just finding that human connection that you can sort of tie your project or your application um, to the juror. And that's really just all about sort of telling more about yourself. So when I'm reading these applicants, I really want to feel like I'm getting to know them. Uh, so adding sometimes the personal stuff, not everything personal, uh, but really if it ties to your application, the work that you're doing, the communities that your work affect, uh, when it, whenever you're creating the work that you do or your craft, adding all that stuff uh, that connects with your work and figuring out ways to sort of tie it to um, being personable or having personality in your application so that it's not just you know, you feel like you're reading someone who's subject A or a John Doe. You know, sometimes getting uh, outside of the box uh, when it comes to the way you format your application, you know, that's one way of doing it. Don't get too crazy because you want to make sure you follow instructions and you make sure it's easy uh, to read and everything. But sometimes you can go outside of the box when it comes to writing your art statement. Don't go, like I said, don't go too far out the box. Make sure it's relevant to the application that you're doing. But really you want to make sure that you make that connection uh, with the juror that's reading it. That's why I like first person perspective uh, when people write their artist statements and that's just using words like I, me, so my work is about A, B, and C versus, you know, third person perspective, which is he, she, they, uh, Carl's work is about A, B, and C because when you're using third person perspective, it feels like someone else is writing it uh, versus that first person's perspective, which is like, when I'm reading your statements or your whatever you're writing, I feel like you're talking to me. So that's my personal opinion when it comes to how to connect with individuals uh, reading your work or reading your statement or reading whatever. You know, third person statements are not bad at all. Usually I think of that when I'm sort of going to a show, an exhibition, a gallery, or reading something in, you know, an art catalog, things like that. That's sort of like my personal perspective of, you know, how to, make a personal connection and why that connection is important because like I said you know for me I feel like I'm actually having a conversation with someone or someone's just talking to me um, personally um, when I'm reading a statement in their application. The second Leo is concise they're doesn't mean you have to use all of it. It just means that that's your limit. So when you're concise, you, you're hitting all the points, uh, the who, what, when, where, why, and you know who is your influence and why do you do the work that you do. As long as you answer those, uh, you know, you're fine. Uh, really, I just want to figure out in your art statement, all those 
questions about your work and why you do the work and you do and the materials and the process. So you don't have to use large words at all. So I mean, you, you don't have to be typing and be like, oh, the rheumative delineation of my work is obfusc obfuscated by the, you know, quantum physics, you know, whatever. It doesn't have to be heady at all really it's just you know just communicating what you're all about because like i said before i want to make that human connection so being concise is really important being concise with your resume making sure you know it's easy to read and you're not sort of adding everything about you know your 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 career in there uh that you're adding the most relevant stuff in there same with portfolio so your portfolio doesn't have to have your entire body of work just really the relevant stuff that you were talking about in your artist statement or the reason why you're wanting to get the the grant so you know when you have things like that in your portfolio it just makes it easier for me to go through and say this artist is you know is is on their game this is what they want this is exactly why they want it this is the work that they're doing they're executing their work really well make sure you have great documentation of your work uh, because sometimes you don't want to have the jurors assume something about your work so having great documentation even hiring someone to do the photos or the video or whatever is is something that I think a lot of artists really need um, but making sure that your portfolio is concise it's to the point and there's not a lot of fluff. So those two things, making that human connection and being concise so your application is easy to read, it's easy to get, it's easy to get to know you. That way I'm able to sort of champion you uh, when, you know, the other jurors sort of convene and we're sort of talking about the best ones that we like and we want to sort of champion. You know, it's easy for me to sort of get you, understand you and say, hey, this individual is the one that I want to have this grant. So hopefully that helped out a lot. This wasn't really too technical, but I think if you sort of, while you're writing your application, your next one, uh, you're thinking about, am I making that human connection? And am I being concise? So have people read over it and you know get that honest feedback so that you're able to write a better grant application. So that is sort of my perspective of the things that you know I sort of got when sort of doing grant review reviews of all the applicants that came in. Um, I do the same thing for other sort of like residency applications or anytime I'm on a jury, um, you know, this is something that always comes up. So hopefully this helped out a lot and I will see you next time. Peace.